Good afternoon. Um, give me a minute. I, I want to find just a page of uh, just a page of my presentation, which I intend to just mostly um, pick from what I have here, hard copy. So I um, just want to do a page to introduce you to to to, to Kenya mostly. Um, yeah, so this is the, the country presentation for, for this study that has been uh, described by, by Patricia. And that's really the only slide that uh, I want to, to project, mostly to introduce you to, uh, to Kenya. And um, we, it used to be called the Lord of Contrasts in the past. I think uh, they have other new slogans which have come, but uh, that was probably more true than anything else. Um, there's a slide there talking about mobile money, which we are very well known for. Uh, many of you have heard about uh, M-Pesa. So somebody has loaded this on the, on the internet. What is this Visa credit card that you speak of? And these are the our traditional Maasai people in the background. Um, M-Pesa or mobile money has become so um, important and central. I think there are at least 10 million people doing, uh, you know, ha using the phone to exchange money and to pay and, you know, do all sorts of money transfers. So we are, we are, we are, we are best known for that. Um, as far as the, the study is concerned, uh, they were, we were able to identify or, or to cover about 22 institutes uh, carrying out uh, agricultural biotechnology and, uh, and to, to cover 37 projects. Um, as far as the institutions that are doing research and development are concerned, most of it is happening in the public sector. Um, there are some international organizations, also very central and collaborating with the, with the public sector. Uh, there's some continental bodies that are supporting uh, various activities, whether it's uh, advocacy or technology transfer. And uh, we also have on the ground a, a number of uh, private organizations that are uh, doing a, a biotech and um, trying just to go through the original, I mean, uh, the initial processes in terms of, uh, you know, confined field trials and, and such like. But uh, Many of you are, are aware, if you are interested at all, about the Kenyan case that we have a, a ban. We have a, we've had a temporary ban on GM foods since uh, 2012. And it was supposed to be temporary, but uh, you can see that it's nothing of the sort because now it's more than two years old. The scope of projects that are going on in 2013, um, uh, we had like 30 projects on crops and the crops are bananas, beans, cassava, coffee. Uh, we have some, um, uh, some minor crops, which somehow people are interested in, things like garlic, uh, passion fruit, rice. Uh, somebody's trying to do some work on cocoyam, some very initial work. So we have quite a number. So most of, most of the work is in crops. We do have also some work happening in forestry and uh, ornamentals. Um, we have various types of ornamentals being done, especially with tissue culture. Lately, uh, in 2014, there is actually a confined field trial that is happening for a flower. This is a commercial venture where somebody has, uh, is coming to do uh, a, a field trial for a flower called uh, Gypsophila. And I think the, re the real reason is that uh, Kenya has developed some capacity to do confined field trials, even though the the, 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 the ban is there, the legislation is still being worked on and all that. In the livestock area, we have quite a few studies, um, a few, uh, uh, um, some research going on. Again, it's not uh, GM, uh, but uh, there's work going on in uh, cattle, sheep, camels, uh, fish. We have some work in fish uh, and even some fodder crops. Uh, as far as the personnel is concerned, um, the numbers have been growing very, very slowly. Uh, among, for example, PhD workers, 
we, I, I, I believe in R&D, in 2012, we had um, like, you know, uh, 11, uh, f uh, f uh, 11, 11, um, uh, uh, 11, 11 males in 2011, and that rose to about 16 in 2012. Uh, the females are not doing too well because if you have the brief with you, you can see something like that, that uh, we, we had like four, four ladies in 2011, and uh, of course we have made progress to six. Those are not uh, very many. The graph is interesting because you can see it is quite skewed towards the right. Um, for low CADA uh, support, we have the numbers are larger, especially with the, with the, with, with women. But uh, the picture is not uh, is not very good in terms of gender balance. Um, talking about uh, the intensity of hum human resource availability in Kenya, uh, we used. Um, a previous study, I think uh, the published study with the Judy and the, uh, the rest, to sort of calculate uh, how, how can Kenya be compared with other countries. And so we used some World Bank data in terms of population and, 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 and arable land and came up with figures like uh, there are only about four PhDs per 100,000 hectares of uh, arable land in Kenya. Those are some low figures. The MSCs are, are also uh, four. And uh, the situation with BSCs per million inhabitants is one, basically one, between one and two. So it, it's quite low. The capacity is still low. Budget allocation, um, uh, the total amounts seem a bit impressive, uh, but when you distribute over all the very many activities that are going on, you can see that the allocations per activity are, are, are fairly uh, fairly low. I believe also that there is some data that may not be included in the, in the, in the totals that we have because of the nature of the projects. The projects, are, a lot of them have, are funded um, from outside and there are very many organizations that get funding. So as we were collecting the data using questionnaires or uh, any other um, uh, article or whatever, we found that there is some information that we couldn't get because it had, it had little to do with the person that we were talking to. So that, there's that element with these uh, monies that we posted. Yeah, I want to spend a little time talking about the constraints in agbiotech research in Kenya. And in my view and from the data that we, we saw, there's quite a wide range of products that are being researched, but it, it, there were quite a few people who talk, talk, told me during the interviews that, uh, you know, it's more breadth than depth, and then there isn't so much of, uh, you know, a, a proper selection of, of, of a product that is going to actually meet the needs that are felt in a public, in a public way. And also it's like we, we would probably need some much more innovation, uh, better than what is happening now, that maybe the products are identified, the research starts happening, but nobody really goes back and says, how exactly is this going to really change the overall uh, availability of food or even products? Uh, then there's a lack of uh, availability of African preferred varieties, so that even when the traits have been uh, put into the products, there, there is talk that there could be problems even with the product after it has already been tested and found to be good. Productivity is good, but then the popularity becomes a challenge. For example, somebody talked to me about the sorghum, which is uh, quite, it has been seen to be an important crop. It's going to meet a very big uh, food need. But then the variety that has been changed is not necessarily exciting for the local people who eat sorghum. And it, it's simply as something as basic as color. So the, 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 the sorghum that is being changed has been changed. It is yellow and now has the gene for, for nutrient, uh, you know, zinc and vitamin A. But the varieties that people want are brown and they are used to. And you know how that goes. Culturally, you even want to eat food according to the color that, you know, you accept. So there is some concern about that. Um, there is, of course, the ban. That's a real challenge at this point. I mean, you can't have a conversation in Kenya about biotech without somebody talking to you about the ban. 
and how, you know, it needs to be lifted. But, and, and there's a lot of consensus that it should be lifted. But somehow, there is no one who is making a, a decision at this point that it will be lifted or it is going to be lifted. It's just more talk. Then uh, we have concerns about policy versus leg legislation. We have the Biosafety Act which has been passed. We have uh, legal notices. So the whole thing is well set out. But the policy makers or the people who are in the political and, uh, you know, class, they still have a lot of authority to make statements. And they can actually, you know, uh, say something that contradicts policy. But there is nothing you can do about that because they have the political authority. So for example, the ban was, was, was just instituted. It was instituted by parliament. It was more verbal than anything else because they did not gazette, but it has carried weight for the last more than two years. We also uh, quite commonly have changes in political leadership, and um, we had a change of government in 2013, and that change of government has also led to some other institutional changes because everybody comes and, you know, when you are in government, you want to make changes that will now support your political ideas. So um, uh, one of the most significant changes is that the main public research institution, which is the Kenya Agricultural Research Institute, has suddenly g had a review, and now it's being called Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization. And that's a major shift because um, a lot of institutions are being supported under that. So biotechnology has gotten taken up as an institute but um, I know that it's not necessarily going to help things because um, people understand the way it's been happening. Now there's a, a, a big change, so everyone is waiting to see how that is going to work. In terms of budgetary allocation, it's not very clear how the budget is going to be allocated. So we, we don't anticipate that it will, it will work any better than what we've been having before. Seed distribution systems is another concern with biotech crops because conventional seed distribution in Kenya it's fairly well developed, especially with maize and even cereals, because the seed is produced, then it's put into what we call, you know, small agrovets, and that is able to reach uh, out there. But when it comes to like vegetative type of materials, uh, it becomes uh, pretty difficult to to take to to the to the to the users. So uh, that will need to be sorted out. Um, uh, with simpler biotechnologies like tissue culture, there has been a lot of intensive work on crops like bananas um, and, and other vegetative materials, but um, uh, there they they is a need to develop protocols for so many other crops. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. The cost of cleaning materials uh, is high because it's the public sector that uh, cleans the materials, which is going to be used for the tissue culture, and it's, uh, the cost has been. Uh, seem to be high. We also need uh, a way of preserving clean, disease-free germplasm in one way or the other, especially for forest products, cassava, bananas. Um, another one is the laboratory space and equipment is very expensive. I think there is only one uh, really functional GMO, especially GMO lab, and uh, you have to pay be bench fees and all that, and many people uh, perceive that it's a little bit expensive. Um, and, and I have other, others here, which we'll probably pick up in the, in the, in the brief. Let me talk about the opportunities. There is definitely a clear demand for, for products because of climate change and population growth again, nutritional requirements. There are all sorts of emerging challenges. Uh, right now, we have quite a, 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 a disease in maize. It's maize necrotic virus, which is a complex of viruses. And it's quite a serious problem. So um, I, I'm, I'm sure this kind of research is actually going to, would actually act solve that problem. And, uh, uh, but that has still to be done. Uh, we also learned quite a lot of lessons in tissue culture, because especially tissue culture banana picked up very well. So those lessons, it is seen that those lessons can then now be moved into uh, the, the, the other crops and even for GMOs. Um, we have also had quite a, an increase in the number of trained personnel in the, in the, in the, in the universities um, and in some of the colleges. So we do have a large population that is becoming interested. Of course, they are getting very frustrated now because they are being with a ban. And they are, some of them are asking even like their professors, what is the point? What was the point of me graduating or studying this course? 
if, if, if there is going to be a ban or a moratorium on, on GM crops? I mean, what is the future of this? So it's very disillusioning. Um, we also, of course, have the fundamental policy and legislation. It's in place. There are contradictions, but it is in place. That's an opportunity. Uh, there has been a slight increase in resource allocation from the government, mostly um, through what is called the National Council for Science, Innovation, Science Technology and Innovation. So the, the, it's, it's, the government is showing quite some interest in uh, funding research, but I think uh, probably more money will be needed. Farmers are very interested. In fact, we've had farmers, uh, you know, just really raise a quarrel. Why is there, why is there, for example, something like BT cotton, which has already been tested? Why is it not with them? They want, they want to be able to plant it. So there is a lot of interest. So even as the, the ban is still there, farmers don't understand what probably is the problem because they keep hearing that BT cotton has been passed. It is a good crop. They have heard that farmers in other ca African countries are benefiting like in Burkina Faso. So there is a lot of interest from the farmers and that's an opportunity. Uh, Kenya is also a bit well placed within the region because it has already had some good success with the, with the seed distribution um, uh, system around the country. For example, something like maize seed is, being is coming from Kenya. It's actually grown for in Kenya and then uh, distributed into Tanzania. So, uh, part of it, I think, in Uganda. So Kenya is well placed to, to be able to you know, to, 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 take, to lead, to take a lead, even within Comesa. So it is it's an opportunity that we have. So let me take um, uh, policy highlights and concerns. Uh, I've already talked about the contradicting policies and legislation. Um, uh, the, in terms of developing human and financial resources, I just want to say something here about this, uh, the research intensity ratio which uh, we, is an ASTI uh, criteria that they used to assess how the capacity. And for Kenya, we, we, we looked at between 1998 and two, 2011, the very highest was at 2.3%. That is the agricultural research spending relative to agricultural gross domestic product, which is 2.3 uh, is uh, qu quite low. And uh, that would have to probably come up. And it has to do with the policy completely, that the government would have to agree to allocate more money. Um, uh, we also, I also think that the, the legislation is still only partially developed in as much as we are able to, to do all sorts of trials. But it, it's, it's really been working so much with, with crops. If you want to do research, for example, in, in animals like GMO, you still do, there's no legal notice on that or even how to go about that. And, uh, and, and, and any other innovative products that people would want to come up with. Um, we also don't have a strategy. We don't have a biotechnology strategy, even though we have a policy which is quite old from 2006. But the lack of strategy has meant that, um, you know, s uh, different types of interest groups just pursue what they see to be like interesting or useful. But at the end of the day, I, 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 we don't have a strategy. And, and therefore, we cannot say that we are seriously focusing on products that are going to solve the problems that are perceived to be, to be real within the country. And finally, let me thank uh, John Tepperton Foundation and, and IFPRI and uh, the PBS for all the support that we've had. Thank you very much.